It finally happened. Just the other day, OpenAI released its open model that you can run on your own computer, and it's comparable to its paid models. I couldn't pass this by, so I decided to install it and see how it performs. In this video, I'll share my first impressions of GPT-OSS. That's the name of the model. Before using the model, it's worth noting that OpenAI released two versions of GPT-OSS, one with 20 billion parameters and another with 120 billion. I'll be using the smaller one, the 20B version, because the larger one requires at least 80 gigabytes of video memory, which makes running it on a regular computer nearly impossible. I'll be running the model on a MacBook Pro with an M4 Pro chip and 24 gigabytes of RAM. Installation is the usual process. Download the required model via Olama and run it. If you're not sure how to do that, I have a separate video showing how to set everything up and get it running on your machine in under three minutes. First, I wanna check how up-to-date the model's knowledge is. For this, I'll use my favorite test question, what is the latest version of Python? Knowing the release timeline of Python versions, which is publicly available on python.org, we can roughly estimate the model's knowledge cutoff. So the model thinks the latest version of Python is 3.12.5, and it specifically says that its knowledge is current as of early August, 2025. Interesting. Heading over to the official Python release page, we see that version 3.12.5 came out back in August last year, and version 3.12.6 was released in September last year, which the model doesn't know about. So despite the model claiming to have knowledge up to August, 2025, some of his data is clearly out of date. Not a huge issue, but something to keep in mind. Now I'll ask a very basic Python question. How do you sort a list of objects by one of the objects fields in Python? Of course, the model handles it, but I'm more interested in the format of the answer and the extra context provided. Yes, the answer is very good. It includes several ways to solve the problem and plenty of additional information to help someone really understand the topic. I like it. Now I'll ask the same question, but for JavaScript. How do you sort a list of objects by one of the object's fields in JavaScript? The answer is also solid. It thoroughly covers various ways to solve the problem. I really like both responses. An important note. I'm asking questions about Python and JavaScript mainly because I know them best and also because in these languages, there are many different ways to achieve the same result. So the model's choice of solution can give us indirect insights into its understanding and capabilities. All right, the model handled technical questions well. Now I'll try something more abstract, but still useful. I'll ask it to come up with five online business ideas. So the model suggests affiliate marketing, explaining why and how to get started. Not bad. The second idea is creating a digital product, fairly expected. Third is doing consulting or becoming a coach. Fourth is print on demand combined with dropshipping. And fifth is running a paid newsletter. In my opinion, it's pretty much the same as the second idea. Overall, the answer is average. These ideas have been around forever. But considering I didn't give any personal info, skills, or preferences in the question, the answer is fine. That's ask one more startup-related question. What metrics matter most at different stages of a startup? The answer is quite detailed, highlighting how the importance of different metrics shifts over time. It's neatly organized in a table, which I think is very handy. I also liked the summary section at the end. Great if you don't want to dive into all the details. I really like this answer. It hit all the right points. And finally, another technical but startup relevant question. How do you protect an API from DDoS attacks? Okay, the answer is detailed. You can tell the model understands, so to speak, the topic and knows what we're looking for. There's even a section about what to monitor and a checklist for quickly verifying that the essentials are covered. This was another great response. I really liked it. And so for the questions, now let's talk about how well this all runs on a regular computer. Again, this is not a deep technical review, just my first impressions of OpenAI's first open model released just a few days ago. As I mentioned, I tested the model on my MacBook Pro with an M4 Pro chip and 24 gigs of RAM. I intentionally didn't run it on my desktop with the latest NVIDIA GPU in 128 gigs of RAM because I wanted this test to reflect 
how an average user might run this model on their own machine. Now a few words about performance. Here's a summary table showing how long the model took to respond to each question. But don't treat this as rigorous benchmark data, it's just a rough idea of what kind of response times you might expect on a laptop. So the numbers speak for themselves. As a primary AI model for regular use, it's probably not ideal due to the slow response times. But as a fallback, when you don't have internet access, it's definitely a viable solution. That's it for now. If you've tried running this or any other model locally, let me know your impressions in the comments. I'd love to compare results. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. See you soon. Take care.